In your view, what are the best single rules aspects from the following systems? RuneQuest, Basic D&D, Traveller, Mouse Guard. I'm not sure if you're taking the piss <laughs> with that last one or not. Uh, but let's have a go, shall we? Um, so in RuneQuest, as with most BRP games, I think the the, the USP, the, the singular point of genius, is probably the way in which skills and so on advance, because it feels somewhat more organic and, dare I say it, somewhat more realistic, in that the more that you use particular skills, the more they increase. Um, and so you gain in expertise over time in the things that you do, whether or not you're good at them or not. This does drive some peculiarities in play in that characters will try and help or assist or will try and do things that they have almost no chance of doing just so they can get that little tick box. And that doesn't tend to be how people act in real life. In real life, if you're bad at something, and you know you're bad at something, and you have no motivation to learn it, you're unlikely to try it just for the experience points. So it's not uh, it's not exactly realistic, but it does feel a bit more realistic, and it does better model the way in which we actually acquire skill, uh, I think. So that's true of all BRP, but also especially RuneQuest. Uh, basic D&D. What does basic D&D do well, rules-wise? You know, I'm not going to say it's actually the rules that make the big difference here. I think basic D&D, the thing it did that's genius, was having the different levels of D&D. So, like, originally you had D&D and you had advanced D&D, then you had basic experts... Yeah, you had basic before that. Then you had the basic expert, companion, master, immortal, right? And that version does a great job of introducing you to the rules bit by bit as you go through, you know, increasing the level that you can go to. Um, you know, more spells, more complications, more situations, things like that. So it kind of introduces you to it step by step. And that's the... That's the genius of, of basic D and D, I think. Um, less so of the rules cyclopedia because that's collecting everything together in one place, but it is you know it's the collection at the end of all that, so you don't have to reference all of the books. I wish they'd do um, like a modern reprint of that sort of thing, or even reapproach that because it is one of the best introductory products to role playing that there has ever been <laughs> and so it would be nice to replicate something like that when they have revisited the basic concept i think they've tended to screw it up in later times and missed the thing because you as a games master as a player as a as someone who's playing the game you were progressing through levels as you progressed through the different sets right and so you got that same little hit of dopamine that you get when your character levels up when you progress to the next box, you know. Um, so that that was another sort of an early example of gamification, uh, you, you might say. I think Dragon Warriors did this well as well in its original edition where you had different paperback books and it introduced new character classes and things as you, as you went along. So, yeah, but, but basic did it first and did it very well. So it's not a rule exactly, but the way in which the rules are introduced. Traveller, I think the the singular genius of Traveller is the character creation system. Uh, and yeah, we all make jokes about how you can die during, <laughs> during character generation, but it means that you directly participate in your character's creation as a mini game that you don't in a lot of other games and you come out with stories and a life path and you know how did I acquire that skill during that four-year term in the Imperial Marines or or whatever and so you come out 
the other side with a fully rounded character. Um, I guess the trade-off for that is that you don't really get an experience system <laughs> and you tend to be playing uh, a rampaging band of geriatrics like the Silver Horde <laughs> only with a spaceship. So that's the downside to it, but I, I do think it's a great way of generating a character with a little bit of thought. It's less narrative driven than say Cyberpunk's life path generator, but it just takes a little bit of brain power to make it the same. Now again, I'm not sure if you're taking the piss or not. Uh, so Mouse Guard is basically burning wheel light, but not that light. <laughs> uh, oh, and there's the rub. Um, at its heart, Burning Wheel and its derivations is a fairly simple pool of D6s system uh, with a few little tweaks and mechanics. So if you ignore all the bullshit that's layered on top of that, you know, it's a fairly nice, fairly intuitive dice pool system. I mean, a lot of other games have done it, but yeah, it uses a nice accessible D6, and if you ignore all the complications, it's a it's a pretty nice, pretty elegant system. So, well, what's what's not to love there? Everything else about it. <laughs>